I know it um, has been hot much of the summer, uh, but we had a respite a little bit last week, and now it has gotten hot again. I think we could all agree. Uh, what was it, 98 uh, yesterday? And whenever the hot weather comes, it makes me think um, of a very hot day uh, many summers ago when I was forced into a blind trust walk. Yes, that's what I said. Forced into a blind trust walk. I was leading a junior high camping trip. Some of you will stop right there. I was leading a junior high camping trip in August, um, and our on-site leader... His name was Mitch, and uh, he started the blind trust walk, uh, forced march, um, by blindfolding all of us, and then he had us hold hands as he walked us through a forest, and he promised that we would not walk into a tree or trip over a rock, um, and then after five or ten minutes of walking uh, without seeing anything, he stopped us. And with blindfolds still on, he separated us out, and he explained to us that he had put us in a rope maze, a rope maze. And he said, um, he said, follow the rope and try to find the way through the maze. So we began. Hand over hand, blind step after blind step, I felt my way out. Or so I thought. Minutes passed, and you hear us all grumbling and, and tripping a little bit, and, and you feel the rope being held by others as they try to get out. And, and Mitch began calling to us, our friend Mitch. And he said, if you need help, say, Mitch, I need help. Around trees and over rocks, I continued. Surely, I thought, the way was just one more step further. And, and finally, I called out, Mitch, I need help. He arrived immediately. Do you need help? He asked. This will not shock you. I said, actually, I have a few questions. <laughs> and he said, do you have questions or do you need help? And I said, it would be helpful if you would answer my questions. So he left me there, holding tight to my rope, and more time passed. The next I heard from Mitch, he said, nine people have made it out of the maze. I became more determined than ever. If they could do it, then so could I. I kept wondering, where is the blasted exit? It has got to be here. How could I have missed it? And still, there was Mitch over and over in the background crying out, if you need help, just say, Mitch, I need help. Step after step, I made my way further along the rope, and I could find no way through. So I just stopped moving. I couldn't take another step. It was impossible, and it was hot. <laughs> I was terribly lost in this maze. So finally, Mitch, I yelled, I need help. Right away, he appeared at my side. Do you need help, he asked. Long pause. <laughs> yes, I admitted, I need help. And he, he tried to start leading me away from the rope. And I kept clinging to the rope as he pulled me. And he said, let go of the rope. It's all right. I'm showing you the way through this maze. And once I'd finally unclung, he took off my blindfold and he said, look around. Looking around for the first time, I saw that the maze was just a huge circle. I know it had indentations, and it had detours in it, and it went around trees, and it went over things. But really, it was one big circle. There was no way out. Mitch said to me, I was there calling to you. Why didn't you take me up on my offer? I told you I could help. There is no way through this, he said, unless you acknowledge you need help. What a dirty trick. 
Here I was running around in circles. And, you know, once those nine people had gotten out right, they're watching you run in circles. Once I was, I was running around in circles and ignoring the help that was right by my side. And, and I got it. I got the lesson. It's a lot like life, right? We get hunkered down in our day-to-day struggles. We put these blinders on and we assume that we have to go through it by ourselves. I understood why he had us do it. Because we can think that the only way through something is to keep pushing or keep pulling or just keep doing what we've always done. But I tossed my blindfold into the pile of blindfolds and I had only one problem with this exercise. I thought to myself, you know, this is fine, except real life isn't like this. How often in real life do you really have someone saying, if you need help, I'm right here and I can help? Life is so much harder than that because someone's not right there calling out to you. Have you ever had the same amnesia as me? Have you ever thought that and forgotten what we believe? Uh, Of course, uh, pulling on that rope, they, they might as well have been saying we were rowing in the sea. It's the same thing. In that story in John, all the, all the Gospels except for Luke tell this story. In that story in John, the disciples have been rowing for three or four miles, the scripture says. Much longer than I was in that maze. And they're getting nowhere. They have been rowing and rowing and rowing. And now we read that night has come upon them. A storm has begun. The sea has swelled. Life has gotten hard. One of the earliest symbols for the church, one of the earliest symbols you can find for the church um, is, is not just the fish, which we often think of. It's a boat. It's a boat. There are ancient icons of of a boat. There's carvings and, and ancient paintings, all of a boat. And the things the boat always has in common are these. A stormy sea, a crowd rowing the boat, and Christ, or at least a symbol of him, on the boat. That's what the boat always has in common. A stormy sea, a crowd rowing, and Christ on the boat. It's one of the earliest symbols of the church because the church is supposed to know two things. We're supposed to know that we need help. And we're supposed to know that we know where help comes from. We know we need help. And we know where help comes from. When you read this short passage, it's only five verses long and it is chock full of images of darkness. When evening came, it was now dark. And then the other image it's full of is the sea, which was chaos for the ancients. Uh, They went down to the sea. The sea became rough. They saw Jesus walking on the sea. Darkness and sea, the chaos of the ancient world, all the signs are there. The disciples need help. And then we know what happens. Jesus is suddenly there. The waves don't affect him at all. He walks on them. And he says, don't be afraid. I am. You're probably remembering Matthew's version of this story too because Matthew really amps up the tension and and Jesus asks Peter to come out of the boat and walk to him into that sea of chaos. But in John, we don't get that kind of tension, but we still have these disciples. They are in the heart of it. And it's a scripture for us, for the church. So many of the gospel scriptures are for other people. They're a public healing, or they're a a discourse with religious leaders, but this is for believers. Only disciples are on that boat. Only disciples experience it. And this is the message for believers. When we follow him, we are in a boat. When we follow him, there is no dog paddling in the open sea alone. We are in a boat. 
It doesn't mean that storms don't come, but we face them together as a community. You will not find an image for the church that is a lone sailor all on his own. You will not find it because we face the storms together. It is why so many churches built themselves to be a boat, including our own church, the overturned boat. And when we follow him, we ask him to get in the boat with us. When he says, it's me, do you need help? We don't hesitate. (laughs) We say, yes, get in the boat. (laughs) Scripture puts it this way. It says, they wanted to take him into the boat. I bet they did. They wanted. There's no denying that he's the one who can help them. There's no denying that they don't need help the lies we tell ourselves, but they are eager to receive him. It's for the church. Earlier on this same day and last week's text, Jesus fed their bodies with miraculous bread and fish. But tonight, in the evening, he feeds their souls by showing up in the storm and saying, I'm here now, stop being afraid. We are the people who are supposed to know this. We are the ones who know that there's no struggle he can't help us through, even chaos and power of the sea, even turmoil and trouble of our everyday. They cannot match his strength. We are the people who are supposed to know this. I do not think it is coincidence that on that day in the maze, out of 25 of us, who were in that maze, there were only four left blindfolded by the time I asked for help, and three of the four who held out were the adult leaders of the group. It gives new insight into Jesus saying, we will not get into the kingdom of heaven unless we become like a child. We adults, we went into that experiencing experience knowing more than those kids. We knew how mazes work. We knew we were smart enough, (laughs) strong enough. We were certain we had a good work ethic. ethic, Thank you very much. And we knew that we had gotten ourselves out of jams before. We knew more than they did. And in the end, we didn't know the most important thing. Instead of continuing to row, instead of continuing to hold tight to that rope, I should have asked for help. They did. It is a given that in all of our lives there is some tough sailing. Either behind us or ahead. Some very rocky water comes our way. It cannot help but be this way. The disciples had no choice about whether or not they would face the storm. Neither do we. We will face the storm. The only choice we have is how we will face it. They faced it by rowing together and by inviting Jesus to come into the boat with them. And we can have this amnesia about all of that. And we can say to ourselves, but I know my problems and I know how to get through them and I know myself and how strong I can be. And I'm the only one who understands my storm. And we can know everything. And yet nothing at all. If we forget that Jesus wants to get in the boat. He stands there and he says, don't be afraid for I am here. I can help. And he waits for us to ask him in. The famous miracle of this story is Jesus standing on water. But there is a second miracle that happens, and you may have missed it. It's at the very end. It's that they have rowed for all those miles, and the minute they let Jesus in the boat, the scripture says they are immediately at their destination. The storm is ended. The chaos is calmed immediately at the destination they wanted so badly. 
May Jesus work such a miracle, such a miracle in our lives too. Amen.